Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we have a little bit of a special build, and this is a special build because this is actually a Dell pre-built PC, except that it's been successfully recased into a third-party case. In this case, the Deep Cool Matrix 30, which is by far right now my favorite budget case. I'll link it down below in case you're interested in it, just because it gives you a lot of features for the price of usually around $35, depending on where you pick it up. Uh, I got this one in particular on Amazon, not really sure of the pricing right now on Amazon, but it normally has a tempered side glass panel, and I do have that, it's just not on right now, because I didn't want the glare of the lights and all that sort of thing on it. It has solid drive support. It has decent cable management in the back. So it's actually a really solid PC case. It has really nice front ventilation as well, which is really important for keeping your components cool. But we have inside of this thing a Dell Inspiron 3847, I believe is the actual uh, specific number of this particular Inspiron model. But uh, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the process of getting this thing transplanted into this case there are a couple of things you have to overcome but as far as pre-builds go this is one of the smoother experiences you're gonna find out there Now, before I get into the actual recase of this Inspiron, I want to talk a little bit about a lot of the problems I've seen in the past with recasing pre-built PCs because they do make great starter PCs, uh, especially if you're wanting to get into gaming. You know, you pick up one of those Dell Optiplexes for something like $100 shipped to your door, you add a graphics card, and you're off to the races. But some of the problems with actually putting them into a case that looks nice, like this Deep Cool case, is that you have all these different proprietary connectors to overcome, and commonly it's just too difficult to actually do that. Now with the Optiplexes that I am most commonly using on my channel, which would be from the uh, second gen Intel Core Series processors, the 2000 series, and then the 3000 series, that's Sandy and Ivy Bridge processors, the biggest problem actually comes in with the power button being a sort of this weird five pin power button. And uh, while you can get it started, uh, with just a standard two pin power button, then uh, you have to hit F1 because there's all kinds of error codes. There's different sensors. There's a temperature sensor in the front of the optiplexes. Then there's an intrusion sensor if the panel is off on the backside, which both of those can be relatively easily bypassed. You can tape down the button and then just put it into the new case somewhere and tuck it away. And then for the temperature sensor, you can just take that out of the optiplex and put it into your new case somewhere. All those different issues are somewhat easy to overcome, but between the power button and then the front panel connectors on those Dell Optiplexes are just completely not standard whatsoever. And again, if you don't have those uh, sensors plugged in as expected by the Optiplex, it throws an error code. You can continue by hitting F1, but it's a little bit of a hassle. And, and frankly, one of the goals with this recase was to get the PC recased with no error codes whatsoever. Now, fortunately, with this particular Inspiron model, the 3847, we don't have that temperature sensor. We don't have any sort of intrusion sensor either. And we actually have a standard two pin power button uh, sort of little configuration on the front panel. Though the front panel is actually where we run into basically the only issue I had. There was a second issue that I'll talk about in a minute. But basically, the only issue I had with this particular PC is in addition to the HD LED, in addition to the power LED, and then in addition to the power button itself, the pins on the front panel, actually there are a few that require, uh, or at least that are required to be shorted together along with the power button. And they're bridged with the standard connector that comes with the Inspiron 3847. So basically I just reused those pins and actually pulled them out of the plug from the Inspiron and then uh, soldered in my new power button plug. But basically there was a very small amount of connection some wires included in this, but unlike the Dell Optiplexes, which seem to be just a completely foreign pin layout, this is all standard outside of those pins that need to be shorted along with the
the power button. And actually, the Inspiron in this case gives a better security feature, at least in Dell's mind for the consumer. It kind of isn't so great. But without those pins being shorted, you don't just get an F1 to continue error message. You actually don't even get a display out whatsoever with the Inspiron. So those pins are absolutely required to get this system transplanted into a new case. Fortunately, that process was actually somewhat simple. For me, I used my soldering iron. You didn't necessarily have to do that. You could just splice in the wires and electrical tape them together if you really wanted. I did use a soldering iron and then I actually sort of used some electrical tape to protect the, the pins from touching each other once they're actually plugged into the motherboard. Aside from that, there is the one other issue that this Inspiron did have, but it's a relatively simple one. And that is the Inspiron has a rear exhaust fan on it. And if you plug a different type of fan into these Inspirons, a lot of times it will still throw the fan error code because it's not getting the same RPMs that it was expecting to get because uh, these motherboards are designed to be using this fan as the exhaust. So the simple solution to that was actually just to mount the uh, normal Inspiron fan into the back of this deep cool case, replacing the uh, one that came with the deep cool case, which you could either just get rid of altogether or what I'm probably gonna do, I haven't done it yet, is actually mount it into the front of this case and you should be good to go and off to the races. Now, I do wanna talk a little bit about costs and benefits of doing this first off obviously you're adding the cost of the case itself you may have to get some cable extensions to make different power supplies work because those Inspiron power supplies are designed for the Inspiron case with the uh, cable runs being basically exactly measured off so you may add a little bit of cost if you need a cable extension I'm actually using a different power supply altogether that I had laying around because I'm gonna be putting in a GPU into this system to make it a normal basically a normal gaming PC and uh, then I'll be selling this off as a gaming PC rebuilt. Uh, it did come with a two terabyte drive and this is one of the benefits of doing a gaming PC this way is that the entire Inspiron PC shipped to my door cost $80 and some change and for that I got the motherboard, I got an i5-4460 uh, or something like that, I'll put the exact model here, but I got an i5 processor, eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and a two terabyte hard drive, all of which was reused with this build. So then I had to add in the cost of a couple of extensions for my cables just because my power supply didn't have cables long enough. I had to add in the $35 case here uh, is what I paid for. Again, case costs vary. You don't have to use this one, obviously, either. There are cheaper cases out there, but you're gonna add the cost of the case itself and then anything else that you add. Right now I have my test bench 480 gigabyte SSD in there. It's eventually gonna have a 120 gigabyte boot drive when I go to sell this thing. So there are probably, I don't know, 60 to $70 in added costs in it as it sits here today. So by the time it's all said and done, this pre-built $80 plus $70, I'm sitting probably right at $150 right now. The GPU that's getting put into it next week, I think I paid something like $95 for a 1063 gigabyte card. So it's gonna be a sub $300 gaming PC by the time it's all said and done, but I'm expecting to reap some benefits by selling it off. And typically these ones in these types of cases with the tempered side glass panels, they sell better than the pre-built PC. So if you're somebody that's looking to flip PCs, then recasing something like this may be the move to make. It does add cost, but also then allows you to charge a little bit more to your customers as well when they go to actually buy these things. But that's really what the process was. This is a great candidate model if you're somebody that's either looking to build your own gaming PC or maybe you're looking to flip PCs and uh, put together gaming PCs and then flip them for a little bit of added money into your coffers. Uh, the Inspiron 3847 though, excellent candidate. It's on the Haswell architecture, so it's a little bit more modern than the Ivy and Sandy Bridge units that I'm used to working with. So hopefully it will sell a little bit better as a result of that. But that's how I did it. And that's the entire story of how I successfully, for a change, transplanted a Dell pre-built PC into a aftermarket case. It is worth noting that there are other pre-built type PCs out there that have less proprietary connectors. I believe Lenovo's may be one of those that you can very easily transplant over in most cases. I know I, a little while back, had an HP uh, I think it was an HP Envy or something like that. It was a sixth gen motherboard that was a very easy case transplant. So there are other pre-built out there that are easier than most of these Dells are. But this is the story of transplanting a Inspiron 
3847 to an aftermarket case. I do want to hear your thoughts on transplanting these pre-built PCs. Is there value in it to you? Is the aesthetic quality worth it? Or would you just be somebody that gets a pre-built, slaps in a GPU, and is off to the races gaming? Let me know all your thoughts down below in those comments. And of course, if you like the video and you want to see more like this, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. I will tell you right now, I do plan on testing this thing once I actually have a GPU in it. So actual statistics, game testing, all that is coming down the road. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.